I have a great privilege of uh, having our friends from Calgary visit us, Drs. George and Sandy Madden, and they're great friends of ours, and I've ministered uh, several times at their church, and they're from Calgary Community of Faith. Let's give them a warm uh, open-door welcome. Come on up, George. And of course, Howard is, Pastor Howard's still away, and he's in Texas, and he said things are going very well, which we expect. George and I have gone a few times to Israel together. Yes, amen. Yeah, we've had a great time. Lord, I just pray for our dear brother George. Thank you, and Lord. we thank you that he has a word to deliver thank us you, Father. this morning from heaven. And we just really come and pray that we'll have open hearts and ears. And Lord, just anoint our dear brother you, to honor and glorify Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, Harvey. It's uh, great to be here at Open Door. Uh, I've had the privilege of ministering now for 34 years in pastoral ministry. Uh, with my wife and uh, just have enjoyed it so much. It's uh, great to grow in the Lord and uh, had the opportunity to first meet uh, Harvey in 1996, uh, working with Christ for All Nations and uh, really I worked uh, helping promote the ministry in Western Canada and then got to meet Diane and uh, their wonderful family and uh, we just really appreciate them so much and they are such a blessing. We love to have them come to Calgary and minister in our church, and Harvey has just such a great sense of humor that our, our people love it when, when he comes. So uh, got to meet your pastor as well, and uh, I want to say you are so blessed to have the pastor that you have. He is just, amen. He is just a phenomenal teacher of the Word of God, and uh, I just actually listened to a whole series of his on rest. And I didn't know there was that much in the Bible about rest, but uh, he really digs into it, and it was awesome. So praise God, and thank you so much for the opportunity to minister in the church this morning. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Um, uh, just a great day, and thank God for our Heavenly Father. But I always like to start um, uh, my uh, preaching with a, with a joke, and these are just uh, a couple of cards that were sent in. Um, true stories. Uh, Father's Day was near when I brought my three-year-old son, Tyler, this lady writes in, to the card store. And inside, I showed him the cards for dads and told him to go ahead and pick one. But when I looked back, Tyler was picking up one card after another. He was quickly opening them and then shoving them back into the slots every which way he could. So I said, Tyler, what are you doing? I asked, haven't you found a nice card for daddy yet? He goes, no, I'm looking for one with money in it. Uh, you know, dads are so competent, we know this. Here's another, uh, it goes, dad is number one on our list. And then it goes, literally, dad is number one on our list. And uh, this lady writes in, my father was completely lost in the kitchen and he never ate unless someone prepared a meal for him. When mother was ill one day, he volunteered to go to the supermarket for her and she sent him off with a carefully numbered list of seven items. And dad returned shortly, very proud of himself, and proceeded to unpack the grocery bags. He had one bag of sugar, two dozen eggs, three hams, four boxes of detergent, five boxes of crackers, six eggplants, and seven green peppers. <laughs> so happy Father's Day. I hope we're smarter than that. Anyway, we won't admit if we're not. All right, I want to preach to you this morning on a subject that I, I think is so important for us. Uh, it goes along with renewing our minds. And I want to say this, unless you renew your minds, you'll never be able to prove the will of God in your life. And I believe that God wants us to be able to prove his will in our lives. As a matter of fact, Jesus came that we might have life and have more abundant life. If there's anybody that should know how to have a great life, it should be us as Christians because God's word is absolutely life to those that find it and health to all of their flesh. Can you say amen this morning? In Acts 26 2, um, Paul was talking to King Agrippa and he made a very interesting statement that I believe that if we use it, it can change our lives. And he said this when he was defending himself. He said, King Agrippa, I think myself happy. I think myself happy. And I want to say this to you this morning, only you can control what you think about. You need to think for yourself. And I like what he said, I think myself happy. You know, as Christians, one of the things we need to realize is quit letting everybody else do your thinking. You go ahead and do your own thinking. You are who God says you are. You're not who everybody else says that you are. So you need to think for yourself and not let others think for you. You know what? Whether you're happy today or whether you're sad, whether you're defeated today or whether you're in victory, it's literally up to you. 
Don't let people talk you out of what God can do. Because we know this, we serve a miracle-working God. Jesus is alive today. So think for yourself the thoughts of God. Think of how much God loves you. For God so loved the world, what did He do? He gave His only begotten Son. Think of God's care for you. Think of God's blessing for you. Think of God's provision for you. Think today that God is making a way where there seems to be no way. So think the thoughts of God. And how do you think the thoughts of God? You think the thoughts of God by finding out what God says in His Word about you. We like to declare this in our church back home. We declare that every Sunday morning before we start our ministry, we declare this. I am who God says I am. It's not what everybody else says about you. You are who God says that you are. And as long as there's a God, which we know there is, you know this, that you have a great future. I can do what God says I can do. We say, I will fulfill God's plan for my life and finish my course strong. You know, the Apostle John declared this in 3 John, Beloved, above all things, I want you to prosper and be in health. Now, that's a, that's a dynamic promise to us from the Word of God. But it says, Beloved, I want you to prosper and be in health, but you'll only do that even as your soul prospers. See, God has good things in life for you, but you will never prosper above the level you let your soul prospers. Now, you know, in Canada, we need revival amongst us as Christians, and we're finding this out that in the latest survey done in 2013, when it's talking not just about Canadians, but about Christians, this is an interesting stat about Christians, that 75% of born-again Christians in Canada read their Bible seldom or never in a month. 4% read their Bible two to three times a week, and only 6% of Christians read their Bible daily. See, it's so important you let what God says form who you are and what you can do. See, that's why you need to think for yourself. And we're exhorted in Philippians 4, 8, what we should think about. The Bible tells us that that we should think about whatever is worthy of respect, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good report, if there's any worthiness, the Bible says, in any praise, it said that we should think upon these things. Now, why is that important? Because it's important because what you think about will determine the way that you live. What you think about will determine the way that you feel. I want you to know this. Your feelings will always follow your thought life. And we're not to be led by our feeling. Thank God for feelings. But we're to be led by the Spirit of the living God. I always say this, your best days, any day that you have, your best day always begins in your thinking. Studies show this, that when you're sad and you think negative, discouraging thoughts, that literally what happens, your serotonin levels go down and that causes you to feel sad. It's not just in your head, but it begins to affect your moods. But the opposite is also true when you get up in the morning in a positive state of mind. How many of you know that no matter what you're facing today, when you got up this morning, the Bible declared, this is the day the Lord has made. We will and be glad in it. What, now, now what's the, what, what is the key phrase in that? We will. If you don't will, you won't. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. Someone asked me the other day, did you wake up grumpy this morning? And I said, no, I let her sleep in. (laughs) It's Father's Day, honey. It's Father's Day. I get one today. I get a mulligan today. So your best days always begin in your thinking. You largely determine the type of day that you will have by what you allow yourself to think. And this morning, I want to give you quickly four exercises to help you think better, that you begin to say this, today I'm going to think myself happy. The first one, the first point is this, you need to think about what you allow yourself to think about. You need to think about what you allow yourself to think about. You have to think positive thoughts on purpose. Don't allow yourself today to go to the one thing that went wrong in your life this week. Don't allow yourself to go to that one place where you thought, I could have done this better, or that you could have said this differently. What you need to do is program your mind for success. How many people do you know go through the day today feeling, and it's, it's feeling, thank God for feelings, but feelings can also get you into trouble. Thank God that today you can go through your day and you say that I don't have to feel unqualified, I don't have to feel inferior, I don't have to feel insecure. 
When people do that, they go through the day, and what happens is, literally, their brains act out what they're thinking subconsciously. They make mistakes. They even get clumsy. Some people even get slow, and the reason why is their creative juices aren't working, and they can't produce any good ideas because of what they're allowing themselves to think about. You need to allow, you need to think about what you're thinking about today. Their brain is trying to match up or produce to what they're thinking. Or what can happen suddenly in your life is you feel an ache or a pain as you, especially as we're getting older, I feel a little more aches and pains. And you can all of a sudden feel that and you go, oh, Auntie Betsy had that before she died. (laughs) They continually dwell on it and then their bodies start producing according to what they're thinking. This is a true story about a lady who kept going to the doctor and she insisted that something was wrong with her. And even though the doctors couldn't find anything wrong with her, she told them she would never get well. That's what she said, I will never get well. And finally, one doctor had enough courage and addressed her negative attitude and said, every hour you awake, I want you to say something. I want you to say, I'm getting better and better every day in every way. I'm getting better and better every day in every way. Can we try that this morning? I'm getting better and better every day in every way. Now look at your neighbor and tell them that. I'm getting better and better every day in every way. And she said to him, she said, listen, I'm not going to do that. She said, I want some real medicine. No, you follow my orders, and then we will talk about what's next. And reluctantly, the patient started to do this and soon found herself saying it 50 to 60 times a day. Before long, her attitude began to change. Within a couple of days, she was feeling better. Within a couple of weeks later, her strength returned and her joy came back to her life. A month later, she was totally a different person, her friend said. Her next checkup showed her blood blood work was perfectly normal. And I want, to, I want to say this, try that every day. Better yet, tell your spouse that every day. Look at them and say, honey, I just want you to know, you're getting better and better every day in every way. Boy, I don't know, you guys are laughing about that, but I'm telling you, better and better every day in every way. See, the arena of faith for you is in your mind. And I want to say this, you will never prosper above the level that you allow your soul to prosper. The only way that your soul can prosper is if you take the Word of God and put it into your heart. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. What's he got? He's got an overflow of the treasure of good things in his heart, and so that what, that's what he brings forth. But all you have to do is change one word and say an insecure woman out of the insecure treasure of her her heart. What does she do? She brings forth insecurity. A poor man out of the poor treasure of his heart. What does he do? He can only bring forth poverty. See, what you allow yourself to think will dictate the way that you live. You know, I heard this said that once that, that women spend more time thinking about what men think than men spend thinking. So think about, (laughs) so think about what you allow yourself (laughs) to think about. The second thing is this, you get what you say and not what you believe. You get what you say and not what you believe. Just think about this in your life for a minute. If you got everything you believe right now, your life would be different. But you get what you say and not what you believe. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it says, this lost scroll must not leave your lips. So you've not only got to take the Word of God and put it in your heart, but now you've got to take the Word of God and put it in your lips. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. God did not have a stuttering problem. He could have just said faith comes by hearing the Word of God. But he said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. See, if all you do is hear the Word, then faith stops at you. But faith comes to you so that faith can go through you. So what has to happen is you can hear the Word of God being preached this morning, and it can come to you, but then you've got to put it in your mouth and let it go through you, and that's what produces. That's how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and what? Hearing by the Word of God, that you can say, I can do what God says I can do. See, you need to train yourself this morning to agree with God. That's just a smart thing. Just agree with God. Whatever he says about you, you just say, I'm not going by my feeling this morning. I'm just going to agree with you, Lord. I am who you say that I am. See, adopt the fresh attitude by declaring who he says you are. Don't just think it, say it. 
See, you can say today, I'm going to be happy today. Now, why are you going to be happy today? Because God said, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. See that right there? That's enough for you to quit walking around your house moping all the time and being moody. And you're just going to say, no, no, I'm going to agree with God. I'm going to do what God said. I'm not going to be moved by emotion. I'm going to be moved by the word of God. You can say today, I'm going to be kind to people today. Why? Because the Word of God exhorts us that we should treat others the way that we want to be treated. You can say, I'm not going to upset, get upset and freak out today. I'm going to have self-control. When you're driving, you're going to say, I'm no longer going to tell anybody they're number one. I'm just going to just be happy today. See, God is directing my steps. Why can we say that? Because the Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You can say this today, no obstacle is too big for me. Why? Because I can do. Come on, I can do. Come on, I can do what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, I want to say this to you this morning. You need to put yourself in God's jet stream. When you're flying against the jet stream, sometimes you're fighting wind currents that they literally say are up to 120 miles an hour or more. Against the stream, it takes a lot longer to travel the same distance as when you are flying with the jet stream. But with the jet stream, you're being pushed along instead of fighting against, and you can travel the same distance in a much reduced time. And I want to exhort all of us this morning that we need to quit fighting the Lord by saying things that are not in line with His Word when it comes to our lives and our families and our businesses and our marriages. Because when you do, you're fighting the jet stream that God wants to use to lift you up. Jesus did not come this morning to shame you. He came to save you and to deliver you and to lift you up. If you don't quit fighting God with your words, I want to just say this to you. It's going to take a lot longer to get to your desired destination that God wants to get you to. In Matthew chapter 6, when it talks about worrying in that famous chapter, telling us that we should take no thought, it actually says this. It says, take no thought saying... You're creating the atmosphere, surroundings, and framing your world by what you are saying. The Bible says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. But today, your world is being framed by the words that you're saying. Such an example is Proverbs 15, 1, that says, A soft answer will turn, will turn away wrath, but grievous words in your home, they'll stir up anger. So you need to quit saying things like, I'm not really a nice person. When you say that, what you're doing in your life, you're drawing in defeat. When you say, I can't stand going to work, what you're really doing is you're drawing in negativity. When you're single and you're saying, I don't know if I'll ever meet the right person, really what you're doing is you're drawing in loneliness. When you say things like, I can't accomplish my goals, you're drawing in mediocrity into your life. And you can't just think good thoughts. What you need to do is you need to take those good thoughts and release them with words. God has not called us to live mediocre lives. As a matter of fact, the worst kind of ogre is a mediocre. That was a good one. That's a Westerner joke. Anyway, this morning, I really want to let you know this. You need to be an encourager. I always like to say this, leave people better than what you found them. Plant a seed in their life. A seed is anything that you possess that you can give away. A smile is a seed. A handshake, when you've gone and just reached out your hand, you've already determined what way that relationship with go, will go just by letting someone know, I just want you to know it's important to me that I meet you. The third thing that I want to talk to you about this morning is you need to set your mind. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 says, If you were raised together with Christ, then seek those things that are above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. And then the Bible says, set your mind. Set your mind on the things that are above and not on the things that are on the earth. See, setting your mind is similar to setting a clock. If you don't set your clock to the right time, it will never be right. And if you don't set your mind to the right thoughts, you will never be right. You can't use last week's time or yesterday's time. You have to use today's time. You can't use last week's attitude or yesterday's attitude. You need to put on a fresh new attitude every day. You need to develop an attitude of living in a positive mindset. That's one of the things that was so impressed me about Daniel in the Old Testament. 
The Bible says that Daniel had an excellent spirit above those that were around him. And he had an excellent spirit because we found out that every day he woke up, he opened his windows, and he thanked God for the day. And what Daniel really did is every day he reset his thinking to God's thinking. And that's what we need to do. We need to go ahead and reset our thinking to God's thinking. So many times in our life, we've let what people have said in our life hurt us and form our opinion of who we think we are. And so many people today are even living, I mean, they're letting their past dictate their future. When you got to go ahead and root out that wrong way of thinking and begin to say about yourself what God says. An example of that is, uh, I heard this story, and it's a true story, actually was in my life, of someone that talked to me, and it was a young lady that... Um, uh, had somebody say something about her when she was young, and don't be offended, but what they said is that she had a big butt. And all of a sudden, uh, she, she, she began to get insecure about this, began to affect her life because somebody said something and God... See, words are so important. You can speak a word and it get, get into the soil of someone's heart, and it can cause damage in their life until Jesus comes. Or you can take the word of God and put it in somebody's heart and it'll cause them to live victorious until Jesus comes. And this young girl became so insecure about that. She was such a pretty girl, but she came so insecure about that that it began to affect the way that she lived and the way that she thought about herself. When she walked into a room and she was in a room of new people, she said that her thought life would go to everybody was looking at her butt. She'd walk into a room and she'd stay at the side because she thought that everybody was looking at her. It damaged the way that she was living. And what she had to do is she had to get rid of her stinking thinking. She had to hit the reset button. Set your mind to get on God's timing. What she had to do is she had to think herself happy. She had to get her heart full of the fact that she was fearfully and wonderfully made, that she was one of a kind. Why is society telling us today that we all have to be alike? I won't do it because my wife doesn't like it, but usually when I'm in a congregation and I preach a message like this, I say, look at your neighbor and say, thank God I'm not like you. (laughs) Don't do that this morning. But we're all different. We're all made different. Why are we all trying to be the same? You need to celebrate the fact that you are one of a kind. There is no one else on the face of the earth that is made like you and can do what God has created you to do. So what are you going to do this morning? You're going to think yourself happy and not let others think for you or tell you what you should think. You're going to go ahead and begin to say, I'm going to think the thoughts of God about my life. I want to leave you one last point this morning, and it's this. Develop an attitude of expectation. You know, so many times we're guilty of this thing that we just live our life and we go through day after day, and we're not expecting God to do anything supernatural in our life. How many of you know we serve a supernatural God? How many of you would just like to say, give me a wave this morning if you'd like to say, I'd like to see God do something supernatural in my life this week. Come on, see, and don't let your mind go tilt. How can he do it this week? Say, no, this week I want God to do something supernatural in my life. See, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, and we're talking right now about having an attitude of expectation. It says, I am sure of this very thing, that the one who began a good work in me will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you know that this morning God has begun a good work in you, but he will also complete that work? Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. See, God's power, and we need to realize it, is working in us today, but it's not only working in us today, it's working for us today. God is desiring to put some supernatural on our natural. God wants to break out in our life. He wants to heal our bodies. He wants to restore our relationships. He wants to get us into a new position. How many of you could say he would even like, a, God would like to get us a promotion? What about a pay raise? Well, I got more response in the West than that. But you know, (laughs) but God wants to get you to the right place today at the right time uh, with the right people. 
Now, how's that going to happen? It's going to happen by you taking the Word of God and begin to meditate on the Word of God. The Bible says, I exhort you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you would present your bodies living sacrifices, holy, acceptable unto Him, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed. How are we transformed? The Bible says, by the renewing of our minds, so that what? We can prove the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. So today, you need to think with expectation. You know what you can do in your life, but the question is, what can God do with your life? God wants to interrupt your life and your natural day with His supernatural power. He wants you to have expectation for an exceedingly, overabundantly, God-blessed, God-filled day. God, just I give you permission to go ahead and interrupt my life anytime and lay some supernatural ability on my natural ability. In 1 Kings, and I'm going to close with this story, chapter 18, it's a story of Elijah. And in this story, it hadn't rained for three and a half years. Now, that's some drought going on. And, and what happened is Elijah told Ahab, go on up and eat and drink for the sound of a heavy rainstorm can be heard. Now, I want to say this. You're going to have to hear in the spirit what God is saying before you can ever receive it. And how's that going to happen? It's going to happen when you take the word of God that's living, it's alive, it's quick, it's powerful, and you put it in your heart. And all of a sudden, God begins to form images and God begins to create things on the inside of you. And you begin to see things. And you begin to have dreams that God can make a way where there seems to be no way. And what happened is, he said, I hear the sound of a heavy rainstorm. It can be heard. Now, remember, it hadn't rained for three and a half years. And then he said to his servant, and, and it says, Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel. He bent down toward the ground. He put his face between his knees, and he told his servant, go on up and look in the direction of the sea. So we went on up, and he looked and reported, and this is what he came back with. He said, there is nothing. I want you to get this this morning. You may be looking in your life right now in the natural and say, man, there's nothing. I don't see God moving. I don't see how this is going to work. I don't know how this is going to happen, but you know what? God is working in the background. God right now, I always say this, meanwhile, back at the ranch, God is doing something. And what happened is he sent his servant and his servant saw nothing, but what he did, he said, just keep going back. Don't go back once. Don't go back twice. He said, he sent him back seven times. And then finally the servant came back and said, all I see is a cloud the size of a man's fist. And what did, what did Elijah say? He said, hitch up the chariots and go down so that the rain won't overtake you. And meanwhile, the sky was covered with dark clouds. The wind blew, and there was a heavy rainstorm. And I want to tell you, what I was, when I was worshiping the Lord this morning, I felt in my heart that this church is about to enter into a heavy rainstorm. I felt in my heart that there was some expectation that God himself was churning. I could see it. There's some churning. I'm going to tell you right now, you better prepare yourself for growth. God is doing something in this place. The Spirit of God is moving. There's a rainstorm on the horizon. See, do you, what are you expecting this morning for God to do in your life? Do you see God giving you the desires of your heart? as you delight yourself in him, or have you just settled into, this is the best it will ever get? What are you thinking about your life? What are you thinking about your future? What are you thinking about your finances? What are you thinking about your health? What are you thinking about your spouse? Does your faith have anything to catch this morning, to be ignited by, to give substance to? Quit putting everything off to the future. Have an expectancy that God is working now. Now my marriage is going to change. Now I'm going to get a new job. Now I'm going to get debt free. Now I'm going to have my health restored. Let the word of God create an expectation in your thinking. That God will make a way. 
where there has seemed to be no way. That God supernaturally is working behind the scenes, even though in the natural right now, you may see nothing. We serve a miracle-working God that wants to work in our life today, a now God. So what are you going to do today? I'm going to think myself happy. I'm going to think myself happy. I know today my feelings and my emotion will follow what I allow myself to think. Today, I'm going to think about what I allow myself to think about, and I'm going to think the good thoughts of God, that God is making a way, and that Canada shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Canada shall be saved. I'd like to pray for you this morning. If you don't mind, every head bowed and every eye closed, if you would, just respectfully before the Lord this morning. I'd love to pray for you. I'm believing God with you today for supernatural breakthrough. We didn't just come to church this morning to come to church. We came to church to meet with God and have an expectancy that God will do something supernatural in our lives. I'm going to leave here differently than what I came, and I believe you're going to leave here differently than what you came. But I want to give you this opportunity here this morning. I don't know if you're here. This may be your very first time at Open Door. This is a wonderful church to be involved in. But maybe you're here for the first time, and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you simply need to say, God, here I am. I need you. And, by, and God said that he will take you out of a kingdom of darkness and put you into the kingdom of his dear son, that he would give you eternal life. If that's you this morning as Christians are praying and you've never made that commitment before, I'd like to pray for you. First of all, I'd like you to raise your hand and just say, Pastor George, will you pray for me? I'd like to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. Is there anyone here this morning? Anyone here this morning that would simply raise their hand and say, I need Jesus. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for, thank you, thank you. God bless you this morning. Is there anyone else here this morning? The greatest miracle that we'll ever experience is taking place right now. Anybody else this morning that would say, I'd like to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. In respect to the Lord and to our friend that raised his hand this morning, I'd like you all to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he came to this earth, that he died on a cross for my sins, that he went to hell so I would never have to go there. I thank you today that you have said, as many as believe in you, you give power to become a son of God. So thank you today for making me a son of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Welcome to the kingdom. Praise the Lord. You're about to go on a great journey of faith. God's going to do great things in your life. I also want to pray for you this morning, Christians, if you continue to pray. I believe that there are people here this morning that are literally in a place where they have lost their expectancy and say, God, I need you to move in my life today. I'm trusting you for breakthrough. I need breakthrough in my life today. I don't need to know what it is, but I believe that God can make a way. He can do exceedingly abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. But you're just here today and you say, Pastor, pray for me. I need a breakthrough in my life. I want you to raise your hand. Just go ahead. I see hands going up all over the place this morning. Now I want you to take your other hand and raise it up to heaven right now. And let me pray for you. There's no distance in the spiritual realm. The anointing of God will come upon you right there. And that anointing is literally the smeared on power of God. That God's power is going to come upon you right now. And the Bible says that anointing will lift the burden and it will destroy yokes of bondage that the enemy has tried to put upon you. So Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as an act of faith, your servants have raised their hands this morning in surrender. And Lord, I'm asking you right now for the power of God to come upon them in Jesus' name. Lifting every burden, Jesus, and destroying every yoke of bondage. Let the fire and anointing of God begin to cause breakthrough in their life right now. Lord, I thank you for new expectancy. Cause hope to arise within their heart today. That faith can give substance, Lord God, to what you put in their heart. We trust you right now. 
right now for supernatural breakthrough in our lives. In Jesus' name, and all the people said, Amen. Well, as Brother Harvey comes, let's give the Lord a clap offering for his goodness today. Amen. Praise the Lord.